What's the first word that comes to mind when we think of combinatrix? Is it counting? Is it a test of instincts? Or is it just a tricky problem with a move that you cannot prepare yourself for? These are some very common answers that I've heard in the past, but few people actually understand what the overarching theme of this subject is. Combinatrix is about finding the underlying structure, a process of uncovering something deep beneath the surface of the problem. And today I'll be demonstrating this idea through an iconic problem known as the anti-Pascal problem. I am talking about IMO 2018 problem 3. But before we try to solve it, let's read the problem statement. An anti-Pascal triangle is an equilateral triangular array of numbers such that, except for the numbers in the bottom row, each number is the absolute value of the difference of the two numbers immediately below it. For example, the following is an anti-Pascal triangle with four rows, which contains every integer from 1 to 10. And they are asking us to determine whether there exists an anti-Pascal triangle with 2018 rows, containing every single integer from 1 to the 2018 triangular number. So essentially, what the problem says is that if we have this anti-Pascal array or anti-Pascal triangle, we can take the two numbers at the bottom and create the top number in any small triangle by taking the difference. So if I delete all these funny arrows here, the mechanism behind this is that you take this pair and you write down their difference here. You take this pair and you write, you write down the difference here. And this means that if you fill in the bottom row, every, every other row will be forced. Because, for example, if you only look at this, well, the bottom row also generates the second bottom row. And the differences in the second bottom row generate the next row and so on. So in a way, it goes from bottom to top. But this process is really unreliable and unpredictable because the absolute value of a minus b is about their relative size. Like, it depends on their relative size as well. You can't just use it as a minus b or b minus a. And as the triangle gets larger, like if it has a lot more rows, you cannot really predict the relative size of two numbers. And so trying to figure out every single number is futile. So what can we do? The key here is to reverse the direction of whatever we are doing here. So if we have this small triangle over here, A and B and C, instead of writing it this way, which is a very sad way of expressing it, we can start with A first. And we ask which number among B and C is the smaller one. And what happens is that the larger one must be the sum of the smaller one plus the number at, at the top. What I mean by this is that if b is a smaller number, then c is equal to a plus b. And if b, wait no, if c is the smaller number, then b is equal to a plus c. So in a way, one of these two arrow directions has to hold. Like, it's either this or this, right? For example, if we have 7 over here and 3 over here, then 7 plus 3 is equal to 10. Now, the resource that, it, that this brings to the table is that not only does it give us more control, but this is a forcing move that can be iterated infinitely. What I mean, well, not exactly infinitely, but like it can be repeated again and again to create even more forcing effect. What I mean by this is that you can create chains of numbers like this. Say you start here, 3 goes to 9, which is, a sm which is the larger number below it, goes to 14, goes to 34, goes to 44, go to si goes to 69. And the bottom number here is actually the sum of all of these numbers. At this point, some of you might already know where I'm going with this. Doesn't this break the size limit? I mean, you have all these numbers summing up. and the size limit is not as large as it seems. The key is to think about the size of the number at the bottom of the lightning path. It is the sum of 2018 distinct integers 
which are the apex of the lightning path, the top of the triangle, and the 2017 other attached numbers, which I've marked with the green edges here. Now the thing is that it has to be at least equal to 1 plus 2 plus blah 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 plus 2018, right? Which is the upper size limit of our triangle. Now, what does this imply? It implies that we have a sandwich argument at hand here. And the number at the bottom is forced to be the upper size limit of the triangle. Which means that we have found the underlying structure of this problem. That said structure is the fact that all of the attached numbers have to be 1, 2, 3, all the way to 2018. Right? And this is a very forcing condition because all the small numbers are gone. At this point, it should quite it should be quite obvious that such a large anti-Pascal triangle is unlikely to exist. But how do we prove that it doesn't exist? Well, it would be nice if we can create another lightning path that ends up with a number larger than the limit that they're given, right? While this is a promising idea, it has a flaw. But before we get into that, let's see why this idea seems to work. So, the premise of this idea is that the main lightning path is already taking up all of the small numbers, right? And we want to create an alternative lightning path that contains smaller numbers, so it is a sum of less numbers. Like, let's say, uh, let me draw this one in. I am terrible at drawing, sorry for that. Ah, this one. So, the number at the bottom of this lightning path will be the sum of these things, right? You see the things that I'm coloring in green here? We are hoping that these green numbers are larger than the orange numbers because they are at least 2019. So if we get enough of them, we can potentially exceed the limit at the bottom of our black lightning path. But here is the thing. No one told us that this lightning path will not merge with the main one. And this is actually possible because say we start here. We can actually run into this issue where it merges into the main thing anyway, right? Or if we start here for example, it can merge into the main thing. So our issue here is that we cannot prevent it from merging with the main lightning path. And if it merges with the main lightning path, it is going to use the same small numbers as the main lightning path did. But this is where the second heuristic of this problem comes in, which is learning from failed ideas. See, the failure here is that we cannot prevent it from trying to become one with the main lightning path. So we need another idea to prevent this from happening. But we should never try to discard failed ideas because they can teach us something in the future or allow us to adapt it to solve the problem. Here is the fix. If we look at the main lightning path over here and we try to draw an alternate one starting, let's say, here. We can force it to merge with the main lightning path, we cannot avoid it. Like, if you really want to merge, you can. And if you start like here, for example, you can merge with the main lightning path, right? So if you start too close to the top, you cannot really force it to not merge. But if you start all the way here, it's obvious that you cannot merge because it's too far away, right? But at the same time, this does not work because it's too small. So how far can we go? Like how close to the bot how close to the top can we get such that we can still guarantee that it doesn't merge? Well, drawing these two barriers is the key. So we take the bottom of the lightning path here, we take the two numbers adjacent to it, and we draw these barriers. What happens is that one of these two triangles they will have around half of the height of the big one. And Half height is actually enough for our usage because if you think about it, the sum of the main lightning path will be around 1 plus 2, wait, not around, it's exactly this quantity, right? And if the other alternate triangle has around half height or like a little bit less than half, 
let's say it has height around 1000. So the sum of the smaller triangle will be 2019. Wait, not exactly the sum. The number at the bottom of the lightning path of the smaller triangle is going to be at least 2019 plus 2020 plus dot 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 plus like 3018, right? But we can estimate it. This thing is around 2018 times 8000, which because 1000 is like the average value, which goes to around like 2 million, right? But this thing, it has an average value of like 200, wait, no, 2500 or more, right? And it has around 1000 numbers, which means that this thing is actually 2.5 million or more. And so our job is just proving that this thing is less than 2.5 million, which is obvious. It is obvious because this thing is obviously less than, wait, let, let me write it down, 2018. This is 2018 times 2019 over 2, which is less than 2,100 2, squared over 2, right? And we know that 21 squared is 4, 4, 1. So this thing is, this thing is actually less than, wait, no, it's equal to 2, 2, 0500, which is less than 2.5 million. So we have essentially proven that the bottom of the lightning path in our chosen triangle will be larger than the bottom of the main lightning path, which is impossible given that this is the limit. This is a size limit of any number in the, in the triangle given. So we have reached a contradiction. There are a few things that we can take away from this problem. Firstly, the thing that we did as our first idea is that we reverse the direction of the operation. Instead of thinking of it as the difference of the two numbers at the bottom creating the top number, we start with the top number and create the chain reaction of adding more numbers until it gets to the bottom. But if we did not see the chain reaction, we can still know that this is a good idea because it creates a forcing effect. The main heuristic of this problem is a forcing move. And the forcing move in question here is that you add the smaller number to the top number. You know that the resulting number is larger. And it can get larger and larger as we sum up more and more numbers until it gets to the bottom. And as we saw, it is a very strong condition because the smallest number that can be the bottom of the lightning path it's basically the largest number that they are allowing us to write. So seeing that this is a very forcing condition, we can start capitalizing on this by trying to break it by constructing another lightning path. The second thing to take away from this problem is the idea of learning from failure. So even though our first idea of just constructing another random lightning path failed because they can merge, looking back at why it fails will uncover the idea that actually works for us by constructing the two barriers to prevent it from merging. And th these are the two main things that I want you guys to take away from the problem. Find forcing moves, find the underlying structure, and learn from the failed idea. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I hope to see everyone next time as I tackle more problems. This is Celestia in Free For All episode 2. Thank you for watching.